So I should tell you, I am not an electrician. Electricity is dangerous and you can really hurt yourself. So while I'm working with uh, something that's not hooked up now, the intention of course is to hook that up to electricity. And if you wire things wrong, when you go to wire it to the panel, you might be in for a shock. Don't take anything I say without speaking to a qualified electrician because I am certainly not one. I'm just sort of uh, scared of electricity and scared enough to to try and be really careful. It doesn't mean that you should take anything I say as if it's actually what's going on because I don't know. Who knows? A licensed electrician knows. Okay, well, I'm gonna take this medicine cabinet off and I'm going to rewire the medicine cabinet. Now, it just occurred to me that there are some tabs on the back panel so it's possible I might need I might be able to pull off the back panel and get to the wires rather than feeding it through one of my concerns here is that when I unscrew these and pull the wires through this channeling here I'll lose the identification of the various wires because they're dirty. The white wire doesn't look white. The black wire doesn't necessarily look black. So, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it off. I put these four bolts in there. I'm going to take it off and then I'm going to try to to take off the back panel. In some cases as I'm going through the rewiring process I may kind of talk about where, how the, the stuff works, but it's just the, the way I like to look at things. So today I'm going to uh, begin the process at least of rewiring the, the medicine cabinet for the bathroom. I'm gonna go through the tools that uh, I'm gonna use. There's not that many, but I think it might be helpful. Oh, and then, I want to tell you about these slippers. I'm wearing some sort of hard soled memory foam slippers that are really comfortable. And since I'm just working in the basement, just standing here, uh, rather than wearing sort of my old beat up work shoes that have holes in the soles and, and that sort of stuff, I thought I would wear these. They're not sponsoring me or anything like that. However, I'll probably put an Amazon link in the description because if you stand up for any long period of time, these kind of things are really great. I will get a small commission if you purchase through my link, but of course it doesn't cost you any more. And uh, I may do that for some of the tools and devices that I'm using at the same time. So now to the tools. I'm just setting these up here because I, I thought it makes sense to, uh, to set up my uh, tools get all the tools collected in one place anyways we've got so many projects going on it's very difficult sometimes to keep track of where everything is so I thought I would get them uh, out in one place so they're handy I don't have to stop what I'm doing and go fetch a tool so I have various Phillips and flat screwdrivers needle nose pliers I have some little uh, clamps these are nice and easy to put on when you need to hold something out of the way a hammer painter's tool box cutter. Now for the electrical tools, I have a multimeter. The multimeter is great for, uh, for testing wires and seeing if the wire has continuity, for example. So even though it's not plugged in, it won't have current running through it. I can tell if the wire uh, is broken anywhere underneath the insulation. Of course, wire strippers, because when you're working with wiring, you often need these. And this is a, uh, this is a, a wire stripping tool for Romex, so it'll allow me to, what I'm gonna do is buy some 14.3 Romex, which will have a red and a, uh, and a black and a white wire inside their 14 gauge wire, which is probably what's in that lamp. And this allows me to strip that sheathing off it so I can get the three wires that are inside. Well, there's four wires inside of 14.3 because there, there is a, um, a non-insulated copper wire for the ground, but. Uh, we don't need that for this, and, except maybe a little section. Yeah, so this tool comes in real handy. I shall try and talk through this, the steps as I go. Bear with me and don't 
uh, be too disappointed if I sort of lose my train of thought or forget that I'm being recorded. But so, as I mentioned, along the sides, there are, there are these tabs. And I don't know what happens when I pull them off. So, so oh, even better, there's tabs here. I think these are the tabs I want to pull off. Let's see, can I take this out? I can. Would you look at that? So, really good news. I can take this out. And let me set it so you can see it. So here are the wires that go inside the mirror. There's a red and a white and a black wire and these wires are going to now are accessible and i can see already here that these wires uh, are kind of old and worn and very brittle so these are the wires i'll be replacing and it's so nice that i can get to them so while i get the tape and the sharpie I also thought I would get some, I would grab some Romex here so I can demonstrate what I meant about the two wire and three wire, uh, as well as this tool. So this tool, how's it work? And then because this one, one end is the, this is sort of, ripping end to cut apart the casing and then when you cut apart the casing then you're going to see in this one this one is well this is 12 2 so this is 12 gauge wire but for demonstration purposes I do happen to have a little bit of the 12 3 So I'm going to throw you, show you here. This is three wires with a copper wire. The copper wire is for the ground. Okay, so I found this, which is a lamp rewiring kit, or it's a down, down rod wire extension kit for a ceiling fan. I think 
and it tells me 18 gauge wire. I'm going to clean this part up and I'm going to paint it. I'm going to paint it flat black so that it fits in. Remember, we're putting wallpaper on this wall. So I wanted to, because this whole cabinet sticks out from the wall, I'm going to paint this and this. So tonight I'm going to have dinner, watch the Dodgers play the Mets, and I'm going to clean these up. This is some of the original wire uh, that I took out of the medicine cabinet. I tested heating it up with a hairdryer first, and the reason I didn't use a heat gun was, or I didn't want to use a heat gun anyway, was because I was worried too much heat might damage the old brittle uh, insulation that was already there. It's the morning, so here's where I am now. I have, I have wired up to both uh, white neutral wires go to, uh, go to their appropriate wire. One of them is blue because I didn't have another white wire that was long enough. Um, so I've indicated that it's the neutral by putting some white electrical tape on it. The black is uh, is the, the hot wire. And up in here, I've connected these two green wires, which are my secondary power. So, just to review, the, uh, the hot wire is gonna connect to the hot wire from the, uh, the, junk, or the panel the hot wire is going to come in here. It has a switch, which turns on this light. And then it, it also has another hot wire that goes out. It represents, it is a green wire. The green wire comes in here, connects to the green wire from this, so that the switch turns on both. Now both this socket and this socket have a neutral coming. And so in one case the neutral is blue, the other case, the neutral is white, and they should work. This socket here had the thicker, uh, they were black wires, but they, they were 12-gauge uh, wires, and those wires I have cut off here at the, at the socket because I don't want this, uh, this plug to be used. 
So that was, and that was simply a continuous hot uh, running to the socket with a neutral running back. So those were the two wires. Um, okay, so now to test it, this is a standard lamp plug. And if you run your thumbnail along here, you'll find that one is ribbed and the other is not ribbed. Ribbed should be the hot side. Unribbed is the, uh, is the neutral side. But, let's see, I don't have the light bulbs now. But before I do that, I just, I want to, there's a couple other tests that I can do to kind of see that I, uh, I have everything actually connected. So... With my multimeter, I set that for continuity. The, um, I don't know if you can see the screen, but it will show me some number. I will just try it and tell you the result. So I have a neutral wire coming from here. And this is coming into this side of the wire. If I connect the, uh, the neutral wire between uh, this wire, end of the wire, and the socket itself, uh, the side of the socket, I should get some reading here, which I do. So that seems to be hooked up. This is a, uh, this is the hot wire, which should be going to, uh, which one's green? The hot wire goes to this socket, right? Well, it'll actually go to both because I have the green connecting them. So I'm successful there, which tells me that I have hot here. And then if I connect it to this one and I get something, which I do, that tells me that the greens that are going here between them are good. The final one is the blue neutral. So neutral here to the side of the socket there gives me a reading. So there's continuity there. Success. Let's see how I can do this. What I want to try is to test the switch itself. So because I should have continuity between this socket hot and this socket hot, which I do. Now if I flip the switch, I should not have the continuity, and nope, I do have continuity. Ah, that's not, uh, that's not the right test. I have continuity between these two because there's a connected wire. What I want to test with the switch is just continuity to either one um, by looking at the, uh, the hot wire. So if I connect the hot wire to the l light bulb in the socket, what represents the light bulb, I have no continuity there, so it's off. And I do have continuity there, so that's on. I'll turn it off. Light bulb here. This is also... I hope, an end-to-end -end test on this, right? Because this is going to test that the socket itself is, is working. Although, light bulbs can be tricky, particularly modern ones. I might need to do a secondary test. So now, I will hook up my cord, which represents the power coming from the panel. And then I will... Uh, Plug this guy in, make sure the breaker doesn't trip, and then I will flip the switch and see if the bulb goes on, and if there's continuity here to here, then that should work. And again, I can test with my thumbnail so I know my, uh, my hot from my neutral. I thought I had a few there. Time out while I grab some wire nuts. Have another little pack of wire nuts here. Okay. 
his first step hot to hot. And now, of course, I have two neutrals. Okay. I should be hooked up. Now, of course, I have a plug, and I will plug my plug into the extension cord, and then I have power. First test is, of course, to make sure the breaker doesn't trip. Second one is to flip the switch and see if we have light. Yay! Okay, I'm so happy that I have light. It's no take that I have light here. I have light. Yay! These brackets, they go here and hold my light on. And each screw in with two screws. Thank you. 